to Summer Dreamers Mindful Eating Yoga and Media Camp. We're going to explore um, yoga and mindfulness and I'd like to introduce you to some concepts. So we have these marvelously complicated, perhaps the most complicated system in the entire planet is the brain. And there it is. It's in three different layers. There's a brain stem at the bottom, the oldest part of our brain, and then the limbic system, which basically all the mammals have, but the reptiles don't. And then there's the prefrontal cortex, or the neocortex, sort of the top of the ice cream cone, if you will. And then the prefrontal cortex, that very special area behind our forehead, um, which does all of the executive functions. So this incredibly complex system is designed to do a very, very simple thing. And I'd like to sort of review some real basic biology in order to explain what that brain is busy doing all day long. So think maybe two, three billion years ago, a single cell, a single organism, life has its very basic features of a membrane or a wall that separates the inside from the outside. And on the inside, you have some structures and the organization on the inside is higher than the organization on the outside. And in order for life to survive, it needs to take in resources. It needs to take in food. And it, it basically, life needs to maintain balance. And there's a fancy word for that called homeostasis. But basically, it means balance. And so, if life goes beyond the margins where life can exist, then it's game over. So, life needs to maintain salt, water, food, temperature, all sorts of dimensions have to be balanced all at the same time. And if any of them are not balanced, then life stops existing. And so, move forward in time, one billion, two billion years, and that cell has sprouted legs, it's sprouted arms, and it's now got a brain on top of it. Basically, this very complicated system is now what we're carrying around with us in order to maintain balance. And so when we experience sort of some sensation that things are going out of balance, um, that can be stressful. But if we feel that we have the capacity to bring things back into balance, then we're not stressed. And so stress is basically the, when we feel that we don't have the capacity to manage an imbalance in our systems. And that would include not just food, or, but also our social environment, um, our performance in school, whenever our expectations of what we need to do are different from what we expect is going to actually happen in order to maintain the balance. When that's, there's a distance between those two and we don't feel that we have the resources to bring them back together, then we, feel we experience stress. And how that stress is expressed is in fight or flight. And so today, with so many different demands on our time to do stuff, it's the busiest time that's ever been. And basically what we have is a lot of stress compared to say 40,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, there would have been lots of opportunities for calming and relaxing in between the stressful times. And so what we do with the mindfulness practice is actually engage something called the relaxation response, which is sort of the opposite of the fight or flight response. It's a way for us to calm. It's a, it's a skill which is developed, and the more you practice it, the better you get at it. And while you're doing this, mindfulness practice, maybe a focused breathing there's, or a mindful eating practice could be calming or a mindful walking practice could be calming. Um, basically any sensation that you have that you focus your attention on 
can be some form of a mindfulness practice. There's very basic ones that are called formal practices, such as mindful breathing or focused attention, exercise of bringing the sensations and focusing the sensations on the breathing. Um, mindful eating could also be a formal exercise. And then there are these other opportunities throughout the day when you can bring mindfulness practice into your daily routines, and those are called informal practices. So here's our guy who is basically thinking about all the things that he's got to keep balanced. And he may be thinking about things that are in the past, or he may be thinking about things that are in the future. Here's a bubble of thought about all the things that he's thinking about in the future. And then there's now. And his sensations, this is past, this is future. Get out of room there. And then there's the present. And so if we spend a lot of time thinking about the past, it can get us into emotional problems. Basically, you can't change the past. If you're in the past, you're not really thinking about what's happening in the present moment, which is where you can act on your life. And if you're thinking too much in the future, you could be experiencing anxiety and worry about thinking about what's going to happen. Um, our sensations bring us into the present moment. And it may be one of the most delightful things to be a child and living in the present moment. And in, at your age, between third and fourth and fifth grade, um, you're sort of halfway grown up and halfway still a child. Um, and as, you, as people get older, they tend to spend most of their time worrying about the future or worrying about the past. And so what I'm hoping we can do is bring this mindfulness practice to you at a very young age and so that you'll have the capacity for focusing on the present and this actually builds your ability to focus your attention as well as enhance your regulation uh, planning control of your habits and all sorts of um, skills for self-regulation um, so there we have it this is this is who we are we can be in the past, we can be in the future, or we could be focusing our attention on our sensations.